Hello, hi. So in honor of October, which is the month that Halloween is celebrated in, I am just inspired to talk about some of the horror movies that I'm watching. So as with a lot of horror fans, you know, people who enjoy this time of the year, there, there's movies galore. So there's new movies, there's old movies, you know, there's just, there's TV shows. Like there's so many different cool kind of horror themed, spooky things that come out this month. And no difference. We definitely have a lineup of some really cool movies coming up this month. However, there was a movie that came out last month that I, um, that caught my eye and I definitely wanted to watch it. Um, had to watch it during the day with the lights on. I will talk more about that in a second, but I wanted to see it. I was interested, even though, you know, it was we're leading into um, October, but I thought it was cool to get a jump start on that. Um, and the movie that I'm talking about is called Alive. It was released by Netflix um, in September and it is a Korean horror film. Um, and it's a Korean horror film that's about zombies. So if you have not seen The Train to Busan, which came out a couple of years ago, I believe, if you have not seen that and you enjoy a good horror movie, that one is a good time. It is, it's a fun, it's fun just because it takes you on a ride. It's scary just because the zombies, the zombies are so, the zombies, the zombies are so aggressive. Um, but the people are relatable, like the the good things that they do are relatable. The jacked up things that they do are also relatable. So it's a fun ride. It's a fun movie. It's just scary enough. Um, if you are not a horror fan, you may not like it because it's, it's very gory. Um, most zombie movies are just because you have people that are dead eating people. So that can get gory. But it's a good time. I definitely check it out. I'm referencing that because Alive gave me similar vibes. And so it's a good comparison um, as far as expectation, in my opinion. Um, a little bit about the plot. So Alive is straightforward zombie movie. It does not take you long to get into the zombie time. You know, some zombie movies, it's a slower build where it's like, things are cool and then like you see a zombie you might see a zombie right away but it takes you know some time into the movie before actually the zo the true uh, outbreak takes place and like zombies are everywhere not this one literally you are watching it it starts to set the tone i don't know the dude wakes up um he's going about his day and zombies like it's very much takes you right into the action which is cool because this is in my opinion this is kind of like a a slice of life zombie film so it is about you know the outbreak and it's about what happens but it's more about the individual experiences of the characters in the movie versus some other zombie movies where are you know they'll kind of talk about what caused the zombies to come how we're trying to get rid of the zombies or how we're trying to fix things or how we're trying to you know normalize or whatever they're trying to do that is a part of it even if there isn't a, a lot of progress made because the zombies come in you know jack stuff up but that's oftentimes where it goes the difference with alive it's just a slice it's just two people um for the most part that are trying to survive in a zombie outbreak so I'm not giving you, I'm not giving anything away with that. Um, but if you're checking this out and you say you, you got me about four minutes in, hello, welcome. Um, this is going to have a lot of spoilers. Um, I'm not doing a play by play of the movie, but I will kind of talk about some plot points that, you know, you could find spoilery. So if you have not watched a live, pause this, you can stop it, save it, remember to come back to it and then, you know, let me know what you think in the comments below after you take it, after you watch it. Like I said, it's definitely not, uh, just like Train to Busan, it's not a horror newbie friendly film. Unless you're just move, go, going to the horror with the idea that I want to lean in and really have a horror experience just because it is scary. Um, it is gory. I mean, it's zombies. Zombies typically are gory. Um, and it's just kind of straight, straight ahead horror. The thing that I'm starting to realize that I like about when I watch um, horror that is come, that is created in other countries that are not American horror 
is that it's it's a really cool way to expand the universe of the creatures so like you know zombies you, you have zombie movies from i'm sure countries all over the world um and so zombies are not uniquely american but the horror culture it's there's sometimes a shift so for example american zombies are slow american zombies you know they will swarm you but it's kind of like a lumbery swarm where it, you know if you can maneuver or no one like falls on you or kind of grabs you you can for the most part you can you can get out if it's, if it's only a couple of now if it's a huge big bunch of zombies then maybe not but in alive and train to busan um, which are korean hawk zombie movies the zombies are fast they change fast they move fast so that element of horror kind of levels it up because you know they're quick so in instances where it's like okay i can just kind of outrun or outmaneuver nah these zombies like they throw their whole body into the run to come and chew your face off and so that makes it a bit more scary so that's why i say for people who are new to horror and you are more you know familiar with american horror tropes and american horror culture then you will might be a little bit more um frightened by these zombies because they're aggressive and they run fast and they come get you and another thing about the alive zombies which i thought was interesting um, and they actually reference it in the movie is that they seem to retain some level of muscle memory so like they you know could open doors they could remember things that they did in life for example one scene um a zombie like was a firefighter and the zombie firefighter was able to climb some climb um something and so you know when you watch like American zombie movies like The Walking Dead, if you, that as a TV series, or any kind of Latin, Night of the Living Dead zombie shows, they tend to become fairly much, fairly mindless eating machines. Um, so like if you, you know, are running and you go into a room and close a door, they will just commence to beating on the door and just kind of throwing themselves into the door until they break it down. They're not gonna stop and try the knob. That's not going to happen um, just because the whole um, the theme, the idea, you know, of zombies is that they are the only thing that works is their basis desires and really just their desire to feed. Um, and so they're always looking for food Us as people. They're um, the food they're attracted to some in some zombie um, lore, it'll say like the brain stem. So you'll see the movies where the zombies will like attack a person and like will bite their neck. Um, and some, it's just the, I guess, living human flesh, I guess, is the, is the, um, the taste of appeal. Um, and so they're pretty much just mindless eating machines. They don't, they can't swim. They can't open things. They can't climb things. You know, if they end up kind of finding their way over a wall, it's because they all kind of piled on top of each other just by like brute running and climbing and moving until they ha maybe can get over the wall. But usually what happens is that the weight, their sheer weight will just knock it down. So I'm saying all that to say, <laughs> because the zombies in Alive, them dudes and ladies, <laughs> those folks were opening doors, climbing things, pulling things like they were moving with a level of awareness that also added to the creep factor which i thought was pretty cool um and so just a quick synopsis synopsis i can't talk synopsis um it's alive it's about it's two characters it's um and i'm dr completely drawing a blank on their names which i will put down below but they are um it starts off with one guy he's in his apartment alone his family it shows at the beginning his family leaves he's at the apartment alone um and he you know he wakes up and um, no it actually doesn't show that at the beginning it doesn't show that till later it just shows he wakes up um he's in his apartment alone but he has a note from his mom saying you know we left in a hurry there's no groceries so it kind of sets the tone that he's in this apartment there's probably l limited food um you know most of the time when people say there's no groceries it just means there's not a, there's not a lot of food like you have to go to the store but that doesn't mean that the cupboards are completely bare um for the most part, you know, in some instances that's, that's the case, but oftentimes when someone says we don't have groceries, it just means that, you know, we're down to the bare minimum, especially if it's in a household where like you live with your parents and things like that, you, you know, 
so nonetheless you know that the food is limited and you know that he's alone but he doesn't live alone but you know that that's what's happening so he gets up like i said jumps right into the plot he is it's happening it's zombie time so you see his journey of, of just trying to stay alive um and you know dealing with the the losing of the, the resources going away um you know power starts eventually cuts out just all the things that happen when you're in this grid um, that's fed by a system that has to be managed by people, but people become a lim in limited supply because most of them in this case are zombies um, or killed by zombies. <laughs> or if they've managed to escape, they're, they've escaped and so they're not there. Um, and so he's kind of has this until we get to a point in the plot where he has a moment and then he is, he kind of is connected with another survivor in the building across from them. And so in this, you know, they're in the, they're in the major metropolitan area, um, and they said the town, but they're in the area. And so they're in the, you know, the urban center, which is highly densely populated with people, but also the buildings like where they live, they're close together. So the apartment buildings are like, uh, they're across a parking lot. Um, and so it's, you know, it's reasonable that they would see each other. And so she, um, the other, character is a woman she sees him she kind of signals to him and they then begins their journey to staying alive and in there when they figure out how to communicate they agree okay we I want to stay alive you want to stay alive we're going to stay alive together um in both sides they're in slightly precarious situations her situation is a bit more precarious than his um but it quickly becomes apparent to them that they need to come together in order to be able to survive because they can help each other so um, the girl, she repels out of her apartment into the parking lot full of zombies and on some superhero, you know, I'm knocking, I'm, I'm handling the business. Like she's running and she has like a very, well, she has an ax, but like a short handle ax. So not like a long, like I can, you know, swipe a few heads ax, like you got to be right in my face, small ax. So she has that. So she's, you know, cutting people, running, ducking, dodging. Like it's just very much like this, which is pretty, pretty cool to watch. Um, it gives you kind of an action sequence in the middle of a zombie movie. Um, but nonetheless, they end up together and they go through all these different trials and tribulations um, to make it to, um, you know, the, the end. And it is, and that's really the plot. Like it's super baseline, base level as far as the plot. The cool part is just the obstacles, the zombies. Um, of course, they do at some point interact with people, um, which, you know, in any zombie apocalypse movie, sometimes the people are more dangerous than the zombies. And this kind of proves to be, you know, accurate. This person is almost more dangerous because it's a person. They have the ability to kind of decide to give you a make your life hard or take your life. Um, and so they, but they're able to get out of them through just their sheer will and grit. And in the end, they, um, I said there were spoilers, spoilers. So, so it just has, it has a nice tidy ending. Um, and it actually, I think the ending sets you up for there possibly to be, um, an alive too, um, which would be cool. Cause I think it would be interesting to see, um, either, you know, what might've happened to someone else maybe give us a little bit of backstory into like what happened how the zombies became zombies how the zombies got out into the population and you know kind of wreaked havoc like i think it'd be cool to kind of tell another part of the story but for the most part it was like like i said at the beginning it was very very much like a slice of life zombie story versus a you know here is the zombie here's the cause here's the backstory which i think would be cool to establish if they do a part two um because they definitely left it open to do a part two because as with most zombie movies the solution often is not found so either it's just a matter of it switches from why did this happen to let's see if our main character survive it um and then we completely kind of stop talking about you know where did it come from what because that is something that you can really draw out um as they did with war world z <laughs> that that came on sci-fi which i think still comes on it actually that lost me kind of in the middle i think the the longer the series went on the sillier the ideas got um and i you know it was kind of like horror comedy in some instances and i don't 
know that I had signed up for horror comedy in the same way. Um, and so that one lost me. But that was one where like they stretched it out for a really long time. And that whole purpose of that series, just as a sidebar, was a group of people set out. They had, um, there was a dude that had gotten bitten by zombies but didn't die. And so he was essentially he straddled the world between the dead and the living and they were taking him somewhere to try to figure out what made him live to that so that they can create a cure for zombie virus um and that was the premise of that of that whole series which i made it think to, to season seven and i think it was like up to nine or ten um i'm going to check into that and i'll drop the link below but it was it stayed on for a long time and it was just really really wild and outlandish and funny and interesting and then I just kind of lost interest for me but um that was the whole plot and so you can put you can center an entire you know plot point and around just what caused it how to fix it <clears throat> um and so that I think is often started to become a focus in a lot of movies so I, this was was a nice switch where we just focused on people trying to get out of the situation that they were in in one piece with no nothing bitten no secret zombie bites that they have to try to now cut off um and so i thought it was cool so if you're looking for something to enjoy this month in the spirit of watching something new that's scary i definitely recommend check out alive it's a good fun and as i was kind of looking at some other videos about it i saw that um someone mentioned that it was a um i was actually looking at another video and they just happened to mention alive and said that it was a remake of another movie called alone so i'm gonna go do some research if i can find that and watch it and then talk about it here as a follow-up because that one alone looks like it's an american um, film. So I'm curious as to like the differences um, and what, yeah, and how they approached it, especially if this one was remade. It's a remake of that. So that's essentially the original, even though that may be a remake of something else. But nonetheless, it was a good time. I'm going to check out alone. But if you haven't watched the live, check it out. Um, if you're like me and scared of, um, can hold, I won't say scared of, I can hold some of the vivid imagery in horror movies in my head and actually have dreams about it if I watch it too late at night. So I tend to, especially zombie movies, which freak me out the most, which I will probably talk about in a story time in the future. But um, I typically watch those during the day or early enough in the evening so that I can watch another like rom-com afterwards as a palate cleanser. So as a tip for those of you who may be newer to horror and it's like, you know, I don't want to have nightmares. I don't want to be freaked out late at night. If you set it up so that you have time to watch the horror movie and like a palate cleanser, something funny. I like to do rom-coms because it's like funny romance. I can get caught up in a story like those work for me, but it can be some, there have been, I think at least one occasion where I watched a horror movie and I had to watch a cartoon. Like I had to lean all the way into animation. So you might want to watch cartoons. You might want to watch, you know, a comedy. You might want to watch something, a favorite of yours because, you know, nostalgic, whatever it is. That's a tip for those of you who might need to kind of rinse your brain of whatever happened in a horror movie. Palette cleanser movie is a good way to do that. And so I watched it in the daytime. But it was still a good time, it was still memorable, I still enjoyed it. And I will be keeping an eye out to see if they decide to part to it. Um, or, you know, do some type of a spinoff um, of it where we can get some more of the story because the zombie universe is so diverse. But, again, I'll repeat it again. I'm wrapping this up and I want to encourage you, if you haven't watched it, to go watch it. If you have watched it, what are your thoughts? Did you like it? Did you like the ending? Did you not like the ending? Did you appreciate the zombies being fast as hell, fast as hell and aggressive? Or do you prefer the slow lumbery zombies? Um, what was your thoughts of the movie? Let's talk about it in the comments. And again, as I've said, um, I will be sharing some more, I'll oh, have an uptick in videos this month in honor of October and Halloween. Um, and so stay tuned. So if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to some of the, so you can see some of the cool videos that I'm going to be posting, but also so that you can join this whole little tribe here of people that enjoy the various things that I enjoy. Because I love to chat with you in the comments.
when you stick around. So that is it. Uh, this was good. This was fun. I look forward to the next time that we can talk again. Bye.